Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to um, set up a calculator. Well, actually, we're going to set up a notes page um, to do Kramer's rule for us. So this would be useful if you were um, practicing Kramer's rule a lot, or uh, I don't know if you just are really interested in it, which is why I'm doing it. Um, and I'd like to emphasize this is probably not something that you would try to do during a quiz or a test. This is just something that you would do on the side and have the document with you uh, kind of all the time. You could just refer back to it. So um, Kramer's rule is a method of solving a system of equations. So I have a system of equations here, and the calculator obviously can just solve it. So I hit enter and I get that. So this is my um, solution. Uh, there's a couple things we need to know how to do before we use Kramer's rule. So uh, one convention that I'm going to use is uh, I'm going to uh, create two matrices out of the system. So one of them I'm going to call S, which I think of as kind of like the system variables matrix. Um, and so that's going to be a 3 by 3 in this case. And it's going to be 5, negative 3, 2, and then 4, 5, negative 3, and 9 negative four, seven. And then I'm gonna create a second matrix that I'm gonna call C, which is the constants, the things that each of the equations um, is equal to, are equal to, the things that they are equal to. Um, and that's gonna be a three by one, so three rows and one column. And so that's gonna be eight, two, and one. Okay, so um, that's kind of a convention that we're gonna use, so you need to understand that. and uh, one of the things we're going to do a couple of times is we're going to create sub-matrices. Specifically, what we're going to do is we're going to actually pull out the columns of this, which I could type individually, but um, that's not going to help me to automate the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, something that I'm going to call S sub X or SX, and that's going to be a sub-matrix. So I'm going to go menu, and then uh, matrices, and then uh, create. I always forget that it's in create. And I want a submatrix, which is option seven. So to create a submatrix, you have to tell the calculator what matrix you want the submatrix from. So that's matrix S, because that's what I named it. And then you have to tell it what to do. So I want to go, I want to start my submatrix, row one, column one, and I want to stop row three, column one. So when I press enter, it should give me a column matrix that has five, four, nine as its entries. And you get that. And then I'm also, eventually, I'm going to want to create uh, SY, which I'm just going to type submatrix. So submat of S. And that's going to go from row 1, column 2, to row 3, column 2. And that'll give me uh, the column that's associated with the Y coefficients, which is negative 3, 5, and negative 4. And if you scroll up, you can see that actually is column 2. And then ultimately, I'm going to do that for um, the Z as well. Um, so the reason that I'm doing that is because I then want to combine these in such a way that if you're familiar with Kramer's rule, which hopefully you are if you're watching this, um, I can create uh, the matrix that has the, the x coefficients replaced with the constants, and then I can create the matrix that has the y coefficients replaced with the constants, and then I'm going to do it for the z coefficients uh, replaced with the constants. So I need to understand how to do that. So to do that, uh, it's a command called augment. So if we go matrix, and then it's also in uh, create, and option eight is augment. So I want to augment, and then uh, it takes two arguments at a time, which is a little weird because what we want to do is create a three, um, a three by three matrix. But for example, I can do SX, um, SY, and if I hit enter, it's going to give me a matrix that has two rows, uh, no, three rows and two columns. And let me hit enter. And you can see that the first column is SX and the second column is SY. And if I wanted to, so what I need to do is create a three column matrix. And so what I'm gonna end up doing is this. I'm gonna do um, create, augment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna augment twice. I'm gonna augment and then augment. So I'm just typing it. So if I do SX comma SY, that creates the matrix that you can see above. And then what I want to do is, so that's going to be the first argument of my second augment. And I'm going to put comma, and in this case, it doesn't matter, I'm just demonstrating it. I'm going to put SX again. So this will create uh, the matrix uh, that has the first and third columns are going to be the same. Okay, so those are the things that we need to understand 
And now I'm going to go into a notes page and set this all up. And it's kind of neat, and that's really why I'm doing it. So uh, if you're not into that, there's really no reason to watch the video. So I'm going to actually start a new problem so that um, any variables that I already stored don't kind of mess things up. Go into a notes page, and we're going to use a lot of math boxes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press menu, and uh, I'm going to insert a math box. So for me, it's command M because I'm on the... Uh, I'm on my Mac. Uh, if you press Control M, it'll give you a math box, and that's a shortcut that we're going to use a lot. So here we go, math box. First, we're going to define S. So S, and then colon equals, which remember for you is Control, and then uh, the templates button. And I want that to be a three by three matrix. So three by three, and I'm actually just going to type in the one that we've been using. So five negative three two, four five negative three nine negative four and seven. Okay, and then I also need to store C, so C colon equals, and remember that's gonna be a one by three, nope, three by one, I keep screwing that up. It's gonna be three rows and one column, and that's gonna be eight, two, and one. Okay, so, so far so good. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a matrix for each of these columns, so I'm gonna pull off um, column one, then column two, column three, and I'm going to do that with submatrix. So I'm going to call these um, S1, let's say, for column one, and column equals, and I'm going to go into menu. And what's nice about this is in calculations, you can actually get the matrix menu. So here, and I need to go to create, and what I want is a submatrix. Okay, so I need to tell it the matrix that I'm taking the submatrix from. And then I need to tell it where to start, so it's gonna be row one, column one, and then where to stop, which will be row three and column one. And we get that. So things are gonna start getting really big here, and uh, I'm gonna show you something we can do, but first I'm gonna store all three of these, so S2. So what you can do is you can actually arrow up, and if you hold shift and arrow through this, and then press control, which is over here, Control C, you'll be able to paste down, but for some reason I can't do that. So I'm going to type it, and so this is going to be I want um, I'm going to take a submatrix of S, and I want the second column. So I'm going to start in row one, column two, and I'm going to end in uh, row three, column two. And you can see that that's actually the um, scroll up. There, that's the second column. And I want the third column, S3. You again can copy and paste. I, for some reason, cannot. S, comma. Okay, so I want to start in row one, column three. And I want to end in row three, column three. Okay, so things are getting really annoying with how big everything is. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go on this. I'm going to press menu and math box options and attributes. And instead of show input and output, I'm just going to say hide output. And then when I'm not over that, I won't see it. But when I'm over it, it'll pop back up. So there's no real loss there. So that's menu, and then five, and then hide output. This is just to make it look a little nicer. And then menu, five, and hide the output. Okay, so that's what we have so far. So those are our columns. And so now what we want to do is we want to create those um, the matrices we're going to take the determinants of. And so the first one, it's the matrix S with the X column replaced by the constant column. So I'm going to call this SX. Um, and what I want to do here is that thing where I'm going to augment and then augment. So I'm going to press menu. And um, I want calculations. And I want matrix create. And option 8 is augment. Okay, so... I want to do that again. So for us, it's menu, and then six, and then seven, and then one, and then eight. The next time I'm just gonna type that, and you're gonna copy and paste. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is, I want the first column of this matrix to be the constants, because I'm replacing the x coordinate, the x coefficients with the constants, and then it's gonna be S2 is my second column, comma, so I'm outside of the parentheses, I close parentheses, comma, um, S3 is going to be the third thing. So you can see this is actually the matrix 
s, except we replace the first um, column with the constants. So if you look up here, you can kind of see that. It doesn't like to scroll all the way up. So you can see that all we've done is replace the first column there. And we're going to repeat this. So sy, let me get that out of the way. So I'm just going to type this augment, augment. You can copy and paste. Okay, so now I want to keep the first column of s. I want to replace the second one with c. I want to get outside of this parenthesis, and then comma, keep the third column. And I get that. And we're going to do that for z as well. So sz is augment, augment. So I want to keep the first column. I want to keep the second column. I want to get out of this because augment only takes two arguments. That's really the issue here. And then I'm going to do s3. Nope, I'm not going to do S3 because that would just give me S over again. I'm going to replace the third column with C. That's what I want it to do. So you can see C just kind of moves from position to position to position. And we get this. Okay, so we're almost there. We're just defining a ton of things. I probably want to uh, kind of suppress the output of these. So I'm going to do that. Menu, five, one. I want to hide the output. And this is just to make it look nicer. Menu, five, one hide the output, and menu 5, 1, and hide the output, because you're probably not really going to want to look at those. Um, but if you arrow over them, you can see them, so not a big loss. Okay, the next thing we need to do is calculate a bunch of determinants. Okay, so one of them I'm going to call D, and that's actually just the determinant of S. So it's menu, and then calculations, and then 7 for matrix. And then option three here is determinant of S. Okay, so that's the first one. And then what I want to do, what you can do is just copy that and paste it down and do this really quickly, but I can't do that. So I'm going to type it in. DX is going to be the determinant of um, the matrix that I made uh, that replaced the X coefficients with C. So that was SX. And then DY, I'm going to do basically the same thing. DY is the determinant of SY, and then DZ is going to be the determinant of SZ. Okay, so I have a lot of things. Those are kind of the intermediate steps that if you're doing it by hand, you would probably want to really check. Um, so it's nice to see those. I'm not going to hide the output. Also, it's just one line, so not a big deal. Um, all right, so where do we go from here? Well, here we're ready to just find our x-coordinate, y-coordinate, and z-coordinate. So um, XC for x-coordinate, let's say, colon equals. And do uh, dx divided by d. And the y coordinate, so yc, is set equal to, I'm going to do dy over d. And the z coordinate, uh, whoops, I tabbed out of there, is going to colon equals z over d. Okay, so um, these should be the solutions to the system. And uh, you can actually check this within this document in kind of a weird way. What I'm going to do is, I know I can use reduce row echelon form on like the uh, the augmented matrix, the original augmented matrix, not the one that's split into S and to C. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to um, do reduce row echelon form, so R, R, E, F, or you can find it in the matrix menu if that's how you like to do it. And then augment, I'm just going to put S and C together and press enter. And we can quickly compare, and you can see that the x-coordinates we got are the same, the y-coordinates are the same, and the z-coordinates are the same. So we did it. Okay, so the whole point of using the notes page to do this is that if we arrow all the way back up and we get into this matrix, we can actually change this up. So if we change this up to, I don't it doesn't really matter, one, two, three, let's go to the four. Six. I'm just arrowing around instead of hitting tab. Go nine. I don't know why I did that. Uh, eight and uh, let's go with uh, twenty-three. And let's change C as well. So uh, let's say negative five, three and four. So this would correspond to uh, x plus two y plus three z equals four. Six x plus five y plus four z equals three and 9x plus 8y plus 23z equals negative 5. Since I'm in a notes page, everything should have updated as I change the numbers. So if I scroll down to the bottom, it should have updated everything. 
and did it? I have no idea because I don't know the solution to that system. Um, but I think it did. Okay, let me just change one of them and see what happens. I'm going to change... Did I press enter? I didn't press enter. That's why it didn't change anything. Make sure after you change them, you press enter. Otherwise, it doesn't know what to do. All right, there you go. It changed everything that time. Last time it hadn't changed anything, so uh, everything kind of matched up, but I was totally wrong. Um, so yeah, key, key feature there. Make sure that you actually hit enter. So after I did that, it updated everything, um, and it found those solutions to this system. So now you can do that uh, over and over again. You probably want to save the document, um, maybe as Kramer's Rule or Kramer's Rule Notes page or something like that. Um, but anyway, this is it's just kind of an interesting little aside. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, it's a pretty long video, so thank, thanks for staying with me. Uh, good luck.